Yeah, so we have we talked a little bit last week on the show about the Maritime Corridor. So I wanted to dig into it a little bit and show people what the Americans have uh, in mind for this Maritime Corridor. And I just want to say off the top that the Gaza Strip needs more than anything a port. And what we're talking about here is not a port. So this is a pier uh, that the United States Army is intending to build south of the Gaza Strip. This pier is separate from the pier that people might have seen uh, in the news in the north of the Gaza Strip that took um, the aid shipment off a barge from Cyprus uh, that happened the other day. That is a jetty um, out in the north that's completely separate from this American project. Um, and this maritime corridor um, is going to be facilitated by the United States Army. Um, the United States Army has watercraft that will show you here what they look like. Um, it's a significant operation that the Americans are undertaking here. Um, we're looking at here at some of the vessels um, that are going to be involved in this project, and there's many of them. Um, that's the mother ship there, and you can see the cranes. Um, we're looking at a massive ship there uh, with a number of cranes on it um, that will be used um, to create this um, pier. And so the pier has two components to it. The first component is going to be a floating dock. Here we see the ships. So this is a this is a the two types of ships are logistic support vessels, uh, which you see leading the way there, uh, the larger ship. And then there's um, in each of these units, there's three um, landing craft that will be used. Um, and this is we're looking at footage of the first. Um, the first group that left on March the 9th. Um, and these ships are, are large, uh, cumbersome ships. They're not um, sailing ships primarily. And so they take a considerable amount of time to get across the ocean. Um, the first uh, group that left um, isn't expected to arrive for more than three weeks. Um, in this terrible situation that Dr. Ben just ably described of starvation, famine, um, taking root in the Gaza Strip, we're talking about a project that isn't going to be off the ground for more than 60 days. We're looking here at the pier that they're going to build uh, off the shore um, from Gaza. This pier can be as much as 2,000 feet long off the shore of Gaza. And then there'll be a second floating dock that's more like three miles off the coast. Um, and the large uh, ships will dock at the floating dock uh, and unload the, the ships that we just saw will unload the gear uh, onto this pier that you're seeing here. So the pier is actually like Legos. Um, it's put together in these pieces and anchored to the ground. Um, it's not a permanent pier, but it is uh, a more solid pier than what the makeshift jetty um, that's happening in the north is. Maybe we can roll through them one more time to tomorrow, just so people can get a sense of these ships. Um, so these uh, logistic support vessels that we're looking at here, they have the ability to carry tugboats, um, to carry significant supplies, um, and then they'll, those supplies will be offloaded onto the larger floating dock, and then these smaller ships will take them from the, from the floating dock onto the shore uh, in Gaza. Um, and so I just want to underline the fact that we're talking about 60 days, according to the American uh, armed forces, um, before this pier is set up. And we're getting reports out of Gaza that Nora Abeli described in the introduction of catastrophic levels of famine uh, covering the entire population of the Gaza Strip, 100% of the population of the Gaza Strip. Um, and what we're looking at here is going to take uh, two months. We're going to be into the middle of May uh, before this ship, these ships are set up. Um, and so this American project, we talked, we weren't, we talked about what Israel gains by having this project besides the, the pageantry uh, that Dr. Ben and Ali just described, uh, what, what the benefit for Israel is of this project. And Israel has taken credit for this maritime corridor uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's government said it was their idea uh, to have this corridor. And they went, uh, they took out on a media 
uh, tour, the, the defense minister and the head of the Navy and the chief of the Ashdod port, which is the southern uh, port uh, in Israel, um, took people, took the took journalists out um, on the boats and and told them on this tour uh, that the maritime corridor is is consistent with their blockade of Gaza. So they don't see this uh, as circumventing the blockade. They see it as part of the blockade. The ships will come um, from Cyprus with an escort, um, both by Central Command of the United States and uh, by the Israeli Navy. Um, and the, uh, like I said, the, the defense minister says that it's consistent with our maritime blockade. And he also said, that this pier that the United States Army is building uh, will advance the collapse of Hamas. So Israel believes that they um, will be undermining, effectively undermining UNRWA, uh, the main aid distribution network in the Gaza Strip, but also undermining the private aid networks in the Gaza Strip that have been completely erased uh, over the past uh, six months of the genocide that we have been watching. Um, and this corridor is going to rely, according to the uh, Israelis, this is their plan. And just to, just to note, all of these plans uh, seem to hinge on the fact that uh, Israel will win this war and that Hamas won't exist on the ground uh, and that they can reinvent the aid distribution networks that have existed in Gaza for the past 75 years, um, which is not clear that that's going to happen because according to this plan by the Israelis and the Americans, um, the UAE will be involved in unloading um, these vessels on shore. Because according to the brigadier general who's in charge of this operation, he said, quote, we will not be on shore. So U.S. troops will not be on shore, uh, but we will be on the pier. So they'll be on the floating dock as well as the pier that ultimately um, the Legos, uh, as they described them, um, for those to be attached to the shoreline, um, somebody is going to have to be on shore to receive this pier and set it up. Um, so this idea of no boots on the ground, like Joe Biden said during the State of the Union, um, it's not totally clear how the the uh, the pier is going to be attached without boots on the ground. Uh, in any case, that sounds um, a little bit like splitting hairs um, of your definition of on the ground, because of course, with a sandy shoreline and a beach. Uh, where the where on boots on the ground begins uh, and where the pier ends is uh, very uncertain. So we have a little bit of linguistic uh, gymnastics happening here. Uh, but what we're seeing is a pier being built by the United States Army. Um, the operation took uh, has departed, and so the American military has its mission, um, which to me doesn't seem to be beneficial for the Israelis. Um, and I think that overall, we're looking at something that just shows the humiliation of the American forces uh, and the Americans in general, politically, diplomatically, economically, um, because while they're working on these uh, on this pier, this maritime corridor, of course, as we know, the United States has carried out historic uh, air bridge to the Israelis. Um, multiple planes a day and ships every three days unloading weapons that have been used in the Gaza Strip to carry out the, the massacres that are happening daily, the massacres of aid workers that have made delivering aid um, in many cases impossible in the Gaza Strip, um, are, are manufactured by the Israelis using uh, starvation as a weapon of war. Um, the 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 ship the the barge that arrived from Cyprus um, last week unloaded twelve trucks worth of aid. Um, the Israeli border, the land borders, there's seven crossings um, that are only two of them are operable right now. But there's seven land crossings that the that trucks could enter. Um, as Dr. Ben just described, there's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of trucks lined up on the border that could come in immediately. Um, even under this uh, architecture of uh, siege as a weapon of war, starvation as a weapon of war, the Israelis say that their military can process 45 trucks an hour across the border, which of course they could do a lot more than that by increasing staffing 
um, or increasing the amount of time that the borders open. But even just using that Israeli number of 45 trucks, the barge unloaded 12 trucks. Um, and so we're looking at a game that's being played here um, while the entire world is watching the population in Gaza starve. Um, and so uh, it, it's not clear. We're going to continue to follow this here. We're, we're trying to bring this stuff to you in the moment. Um, and it's not clear from the Americans because um, the articulation of this plan happened by the United States Army Transportation Expeditionary Brigade um, in Fort Eustace, uh, Virginia. They gave a press conference before they left and described these things that I'm describing to you now. Um, but we don't have a lot more information than that about what is happening. Um, but it does correspond um, with what the Israelis are doing on the ground in the Gaza Strip. Um, the pier is, a t is to be set up in southern Gaza City, south of Gaza City, um, matching up with a corridor um, that the Israelis call the Nitzarim Corridor, uh, which is a famous corridor in the Gaza Strip. Uh, it's where the Second Intifada um, really began when a 12-year-old uh, Palestinian boy named Mohammed al-Dura um, was on, uh, on film with his father attempting to shield him from an Israeli massacre that was taking place at demonstrations at that crossing at the Netzarim junction in the Gaza Strip. And as I've said before, a lot of these Israeli movements through the Gaza Strip, almost all of them, um, take place along axes that pre-existed uh, this war. They existed going back um, to Israel's beginning of the occupation of the Gaza Strip and the way that Ariel Sharon uh, at the time intended to cut up the Gaza Strip and put civilian infrastructure amid the population of Gaza in order to colonize it, like Dr. Pape talked about so well at the beginning of this show. Um, in the Gaza Strip, that process that Israel has carried out on a national scale um, took place on a smaller scale in the Gaza Strip, where the settlements were designed to cut up the population centers to cut the Gaza Strip in half. And if we could just show this video here, Tamara, that was shown on CNN, um, CNN showed this video that's based off this Channel 14 report that I, I talked to you before on this program about because the, Israel has been attempting to has been working on building this highway south of the Gaza uh, south of Gaza City um, that will cut across and, and bisect the Gaza Strip um, and along this corridor which they're going to set up a buffer zone. Um, this Channel 14 report took a journalist along. Uh, the route and showed them the way that they're cutting um, this territory. We're looking right now for, for listeners, we're looking at uh, satellite imagery that clearly shows uh, the highway being cut through the middle of the Gaza Strip. Now we're looking at footage from an Israeli TikTok video um, of them demolishing uh, the Turkish American hospital that was along that line, along that corridor. Um, uh, and, and they've destroyed everything along that corridor, which is what this satellite imagery comparing 2023 to 2024 um, just really clearly shows. And one of the reasons why Israel prevents this kind of satellite imagery uh, over Gaza is because when we do see this kind of satellite imagery, it just becomes so clear uh, what the Israelis are doing. So they're cutting this highway south of the Gaza Strip to cut the Gaza Strip in half. It will become a closed military zone where um, the Israelis, as they say in this report, um, it will allow us, the IDF said, allow us to raid throughout enemy territory. Um, so they cut the Gaza Strip in half and then carry out raids to the south into the middle camps area and to the north into the Gaza Strip, as we saw them do in the last two days invading uh, Shifa Hospital, um, that they can carry out these raids through this, through this um, corridor cut in the territory. Um, again, we're watching this video loop of them destroying a perfectly good hospital. The IDF said during this Channel 14 story, they said the Turkish hospital was operating a few weeks ago. Now it's completely destroyed. This is the IDF. We destroyed all the infrastructure that exists here. We opened up the whole area with a very large number of mines. And then the Channel 14 Israeli journalist says, not a single building in the area is undamaged. It seems that all the buildings are bent, 
maybe even saluting the troops as they pass. Um, so this kind of reporting goes on in Israel. Apparently, they're not reporting on the famine um, and starvation as a weapon of war. They don't report on the uh, 10,000 plus children who have been killed. Uh, in the Gaza Strip, but they do take them on these embedded military tours to show them this territory um, that's being destroyed, which we have shown uh, on this program for the last six months. Um, but when you see it from the Israeli cameras uh, and framed in the way that the Israelis are framing it, um, you can see the way that these uh, that this corridor will connect to this pier that the Americans are building. We can see the coastline there in that footage. So the pier will be uh, at the end of this closed military zone, which I don't think has been made clear uh, in other reports. But when you put together these two um, these two events, the event, uh, the operation of Israel creating this highway um, together, maybe we can show the next clip um, Tamara shows you a map um, that you can see the way that this will cut the territory. On the top of that map is the north of the Gaza Strip. The Hebrew uh, marking there is marking Gaza City. Um, and then below that corridor is the middle camps area. Further south of the middle camps is Khan Yunus. And then uh, Rafa is down along the border. Um, so the population is still to this day, as Nora said about the Shifa operation, there's still the Israeli army is still forcing people out of the north, forcing people out of Gaza City. Um, when they use the Shifa operation as an excuse to reinvade, um, they forced people. They the Israelis set out one of their leaflets um, that shows that grid map of the Gaza Strip, and they showed all the neighborhoods around Shifa Hospital and told people to evacuate um, to the south. So people that have survived under the most brutal conditions in the north for the last six months were being told just in the last two days uh, that they had to leave Gaza City. And that footage that we saw in Nora's report, the brutal footage of that one child, who of course uh, represents hundreds of thousands of children who are being put through this um, every day. Um, I just wanted to bring this to you from uh, to show you the way in which uh, the Israeli uh, land corridor that they're going to use, um, that they intend to use to raid the Gaza Strip, is going to connect to this port, which I think it's to this pier. It's not a port, um, to this pier. So I think we can start to see um, the signs of how it will look in the Israeli mind uh, when they have this project, which um, I, I just wanted to show you that uh, using Israeli television reports and that very, very brief CNN report um, that I think really, if it's great that they showed it, it was uh, less than two minutes long, um, but gives you just a sense of what they don't show and why, um, you know, six months on, um, we've only seen one small report of what is actually happening in the Gaza Strip. So um, that's the Maritime Corridor. Um, connected to the pier that the Israelis will build. And now to get into the resistance report uh, of what the resistance has been doing on the ground, um, the main areas of fighting, um, I'll get to Khan Yunus uh, in a bit, but the main areas that we've seen footage from, from the resistance this past week um, is along that corridor. Um, so it's along that area where the Israelis are working because by and large, they've pulled out of the north. Um, they're not in any built up areas in the north. They're along the buffer zone. Um, but they have been working on this bisectional highway uh, across the Gaza Strip. Um, and so the resistance videos from this week are actually along this corridor. So maybe we can go to the first one tomorrow. This is from uh, Zahra. This is in the northwest of the middle camps area. And we're seeing a fighter here emerge from an attack tunnel um, within, I don't know what that is, 50 or 100 feet from an Israeli armored personnel carrier that has 12 troops uh, inside of it. Um, and we're seeing this footage. The fighter emerges from the tunnel and fires between two trees um, with a direct hit on the uh, Israeli uh, troop carrier here. And you can see with the, the angle of that uh, firing of the Yassin 105, the tandem charged anti-tank 
uh, weapon that the Palestinian resistance has put into the hands of all of their fighters. And still six months on, we don't see any indication that these five months of ground war, um, any indication that these weapons are running, uh, that these weapons caches for the Palestinian resistance are, are uh, depleted in any way. Um, they're still able to, um, and they're still able to reach the Israeli army in this intimate way within a few hundred feet uh, of their vehicles, which are touted as having uh, anti uh, touted as having active protection systems, which is a weapon on board, um, which radar detects the incoming round um, and fires out uh, a defensive round that will defeat uh, the incoming warhead. And we can see from this footage right here um, that, that uh, the radar is not picking up the fighter as he emerges from the tunnel and fires between those trees. Um, and retreats back into the tunnel and returns to his base. These are not martyrdom missions. Um, these are skilled fighters executing on the ground an operation and returning through their tunnel back to their bases and reporting on the field reports. Um, and, and so this is, again, in Zahra, this is in the northwest of the middle camps, um, attacking the corridor uh, on the northwest side on the seaport. Um, side. And maybe we can go to the next one tomorrow. This is another tunnel operation. You can see the fighters emerging from the tunnels. Um, we've taken out the audio to try to keep these videos on air, uh, but the fighters are talking to each other. There's multiple fighters coming out this tunnel hole um, and surveying the landscape. We're watching um, footage right now um, where the fighter is below the grass line. Um, we're looking up at the grass from this position. You can see him move up and down through the tunnel. Um, and he's going to emerge here just as an Israeli armored personnel carrier pulls up close enough to the shooter that you can make out the markings on the armored vehicle um, and hits the armored vehicle directly. Again, no active protection system being um, being. Uh, enabled here and clearly uh, this armored vehicle is defeated um, by this footage. Um, there's no doubt that's a direct hit um, on that armored personnel carrier with 12 troops um, involved. And again, what we're seeing here as attack tunnels still being used by the Palestinian resistance throughout the Gaza Strip. Um, we haven't seen footage from this area of Gaza before, at least the resistance calling it this area northwest of Zahra in the middle camps. Um, we haven't seen footage from specifically from this area before. Um, and we're seeing fighters emerge from their tunnels. And we know Abu Obeda, the spokesperson for the Qassam Brigades, has talked about his fighters being in position for months waiting for these operations. And the fighters themselves have spoken on camera um, about their preparations for these fights and how they're ready in the areas that the Israelis have evacuated civilians from to battle. Um, and this is an open field that we're watching here um, with the resistance able to fire their Yassin 105s developed in the Gaza Strip um, at the Israeli armored vehicles from very close distance. Um, and uh, this, this clip begins with gunfire. So this APC, this armored personnel carrier is emerging, firing um, on Palestinian positions, but not seeing these fighters emerge from a tunnel. Um, part of the, um, the Israelis say now that there's some 500 miles of tunnels under the Gaza Strip. But of course, and we'll talk more about that in the Khan Yunus uh, section, um, they have no idea. It's clear the Israelis have no idea. Uh, they have no on the ground intelligence at all from the Gaza Strip, um, which is something that maybe we'll talk about on a future show, the way that the Palestinians have prepared uh, the landscape and removed the um, uh, intelligence capabilities from the Israelis. So if we go to this next one tomorrow, this is actually the same tunnel. These are fighters using the same tunnel. Um, so clearly they were able to hit that first armored personnel carrier um, retreat back into the tunnel to their base and then emerge again from the same tunnel um, and target an Israeli troop carrier. I want to point out on this one, if we watch it when we go back around, this is a the two previous troop carriers were um, were not moving. They were stopped when they were hit. If you look at this one, look at the dust flying behind this armored uh, personnel carrier. It's moving at a significant rate of speed. 
um, along this corridor, the fighter emerges from a tunnel um, and hits, direct hits. You can clearly see, again, active protection system. The radar is not picking up the round coming out of the tunnel um, and, and hits this armored personnel carrier, which has a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour. It's difficult with these tight crops of this Kassam videos um, to see just how fast that tank is, uh, that armored personnel carrier is traveling. Um, but it can travel up to 80 kilometers an hour, and it sure looks like that's what he's trying to do. Uh, the Israeli troops get through this area as fast as they can. And just a remarkable shot by the Palestinians, just clearly hitting um, that troop carrier at significant speed. Um, and it's unclear from this footage um, from the fighters how long they're in this position for, but you can see them leave through the tunnel again. And if you look at the landscape around this, they're again peeking out of the grass. It's not clear to me that the Israelis will find that tunnel at all. So um, this is because they'd have to dismount um, and come into this entire area, which we're looking at is a few hundred feet. Um, this one's further. This last video that we're watching is further distance away from this traveling armored personnel carrier than the other two videos. Um, but it, it, to me, that looks like a tunnel that will still remain because the Israelis would have the, uh, the engineering project necessary to clear that territory um, it doesn't appear to me that something that the Israelis are interested in doing at this point um, in the battle. Um, so maybe we can go to the next one after we watch this hit here. Okay, yeah, let's go to this one because this is this is Sarai Al Quds. This is Islamic Jihad um, footage from this. This is from Street Ten, um, and the Palestinians call the street above Netzarim Junction Street Ten. Um, and so this is that now the north side of the corridor. Uh, the previous ones were on the northwest from the middle camp, so on the southern side um, of the corridor. This is now on the northern, on the Gaza City side, um, attacking the southwest um, of street number 10. And one of the things about the Sarai al-Quds, the Islamic Jihad fighters, um, is they their videos, they follow the fighters for a little bit longer. Um, and so we can see the fighters moving from the built-up area uh, out into the corridor um, to attack a troop carrier. And just something to, interesting to note in this one, um, we can see that this these fighters, as they move through, you can watch them as they move through um, the landscape here. You can see that the fighter is uh, Islamic Jihad fighter is firing a Yassin 105, which is a Qassam Brigade's weapon um, that Sarai al Quds is using uh, in this operation, which again, further shows um, no indications of these stocks being depleted at all. In fact, Qassam is now sharing this weapon um, throughout the resistance. And this, this gives you a, a chance to follow how long um, if you can see there that uh, you can see the Yassin 105 there as well. Islamic Jihad has put a, a band, a, a wrap around the barrel um, to show that it's an Islamic Jihad fighter um, using a Qassam Brigade's weapon there. Um, so that's um, the resistance this week. These videos are along the corridor um, through Gaza, through that's cutting Gaza in half south of Gaza City. Um, and as we've described before, and is, as has been true for uh, many decades in the Palestinian uh, arena, uh, anywhere Israeli troops are present and in any form, there's resistance on the ground. And so in this case, the, the Israeli army is attempting to cut a corridor through the Gaza Strip. And so the resistance is along that corridor um, in the place that the, uh, the Israelis uh, are present. And maybe after we just fire, watch this shot here tomorrow, we can flip um, um, flip to Khan Yunus because um, there's been a significant battle going on in Khan Yunus for the last three and a half months. The Israeli invasion of Khan Yunus began in early December and they rotated out the division that was um, fighting in Khan Yunus after their three month um, tour and the commander of that um, of that division said that we did not achieve um, 
our objectives. We did not eliminate Hamas. And so that force was rotated out um, and a new force was rotated in. Um, and we're going to look here. Just We can just run through these pretty quickly here. But we're looking at before and after photos of satellite imagery that was released in the last few days from Khan Yunus. Um, and you can see while Palestinian fighters are emerging from tunnels um, with... Uh, remarkable courage and acumen, what we're looking at here from the Israelis is just destruction. They're just erasing Khan Yunus. They weren't able to find any of their captives. They have no intelligence um, from three and a half months of destruction in Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is a city of 500,000 people. But before the invasion in December, it was more than a million people because of the people that were pushed um, out of the north into Khan Yunus. So um, we're looking at pictures here from the north of Khan Yunus, central Khan Yunus, and southern Khan Yunus, and it all looks the same, um, just completely erased. Um, at more than 50% of the buildings have been erased. This is Hamid Town, and this is an area where uh, the Israelis have been fighting. Uh, they they pulled out in the uh, yesterday. They pulled out. Um, they've been fighting there um, in in Hamid Town. Um, they've been fighting there for ten days. They they began the operation. Um, they they fought consistently for 10 days um, and then reinvaded for a brief period. Uh, but this operation began on March the 6th um, in Hamid Town. And Hamid Town is a Qatari development of towered um, buildings like, like you're seeing here. Maybe you just go to the previous shot, um, Tamara. You can see the way the towers, um, there's before, this is a before and after by a Palestinian uh, photojournalist um, that shows the 40 plus towers um, in Hamid Town. And below, you can see that they've simply erased those towers. Um, and we haven't gotten any footage, any video footage out of the battle in Hamid Town. But I wanted to bring this to you um, because of what the Israelis said about the battle uh, in Hamid Town. Um, they said that this was the most difficult fighting that they had of the war. Um, they sent their commando brigade, so their special forces, a brigade full of special forces troops um, that should be their best, that are their best troops in the Israeli army. Um, and fighting this concerted battle in, in Hamid Town that they said, uh, this is the commander, this is the chief officer of the commando brigade, Omar Khan, uh, Cohen, sorry. Um, and he said, we experienced combat here in Hamid Town, the likes of which we have not seen anywhere else in Gaza. Advanced combat units with clear command structure. So six months into the war, um, the commander, the chief officer of the commando brigade is saying who has fought this particular officer because of the commando units um, attaching to all the different divisions throughout the Gaza Strip. Um, this um, commando brigade um, chief has been fighting in Gaza since November. And actually in the Israeli press, uh, one of the stories about him is that he actually hasn't um, said to any of the troops' families, um, hasn't acknowledged their deaths um, to the families. And his excuse for why he hasn't done that, which is also part of, I think, uh, that the Israelis haven't claimed all those deaths, um, but also uh, that he said that the reason why he hasn't given condolences to these families is because he has been in Gaza since November. So this is a, a special forces commander who's been in Gaza since November saying that this is the hardest fighting um, that they've experienced. And he said that it's clear that Hamas has the ability to manage its force. And that has been evident for the past uh, nine days of this battle. Um, and so he is clearly uh, understands and articulating the failure of this six month uh, brutality. And what we're seeing in these pictures of Khan Yunus are just destruction. This is not any military objective. Um, this is just military vandalism and destruction. Um, and this um, commando brigade captain also said something that I think is telling. Um, and I'll wrap on here. They said they are fighting stubbornly here over something important to them. And we will find out exactly what that is. They have absolutely no intelligence. The commando brigade oper operating on the ground in Hamid Town fighting for 10 days. He said this on the eighth day of the battle. Um, he said they have no idea what they're fighting in, in Hamid Town for. Um, but he says we'll find out what it is. Um, 
I will bring to you that they did not find out what it is and pulled out of Hammett Town uh, yesterday, according to the IDF. Um, and so just military vandalism and destruction, starvation, um, and that image that you're seeing here is what the buildings, because the previous shot showed us what the overhead uh, uh, footage looks like, and you can see that there's some buildings remaining. They've erased almost every building, um, every tower. We're looking at uh, apartment towers here. Um, and so if they show the next picture tomorrow, that's the ones that are standing. And we're looking at a building where every single apartment building is blown out uh, with tank shells. So the buildings are either erased um, or they're standing here with massive holes um, just destroying these buildings, making the place unlivable, but achieving no military objectives. Um, the only military objective that was achieved in Hammett Town was the Israelis arrested uh, 400 civilians, which they continually do, um, arrested 400 civilians. And as we know um, from reporting in Haaretz, um, that 27 Gaza prisoners have been killed in Israeli prisons. Um, and that's what we know of um, at this point. So that's that's the resistance news from Gaza. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit like, leave a comment. These engagements help us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us to get around Silicon Valley censorship as much as possible. It does make a difference. You can also support our journalism by going to electronicintifada.net and clicking on donate now. Thank you.